What's up everybody, my name is Arctic. Welcome to The Corner. Today we do a little comparison on Resolve versus Premiere. Now Premiere, for those who don't know, is a very powerful video editor. I've been switching between Premiere and Resolve, which is another powerful video editor for about the past month. And dare I say, it is one of the best, one of the most interesting programs out there. It's free, it has some kinks and little things that make it special, but I think I might as well sit down and talk to you guys about why I use Premiere and Resolve and the comparison between both. Let's get started. Now, before we start, I want to start off by saying a couple of rules. Specific editing will be in each video variation. So I'll be talking about what I do in each video and I'll be doing a little time lapse as the video goes on. And uh, yeah, and I'll be probably using that for b -Group. But I haven't, at this point in the recording, in the session, I haven't recorded or I haven't edited any of the video yet. The next rule is all of the music, everything you hear in terms of audio will be the same. That is the only rule that I think stands out among the others. The thing is, I don't want to use different kinds of music to make two completely different videos with two completely different music pieces. That is to keep the editing and everything at a baseline. All of the video editing will be done in Premiere and Resolve, respectively. I will not be doing edits or color grading in Resolve from Premiere footage. I will be doing strictly video editing in Premiere and color grading and audio and everything. I'll be doing a complete video in Premiere. I'll be doing a complete video in Resolve. This is to keep the baseline at a minimal variation. So it's just so I don't screw up the whole editing phase of my video sets. So it's all I got for rules. So if you're like, hey, I want, I, I want to download one of these programs, I'll leave a link to both programs in the description below. Thanks for watching. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about today is workflow. What I do initially in both programs will change from time to time, but most of the time I would separate everything into a bin. Now those bins can be music, A-roll, B-roll, all of the other footage I usually put into a like graphics folder or a like like a, its own dedicated folder. And I do have a system set up so it's like, hey, I have B-roll and hey, I have music and then I have graphics, I believe, and then everything else will be sorted out into bins respectively in the project. Now, the next thing I would do after that is create a rough cut. Uh, I would crop out the video and if it's like a two factor video like the one you see right now, it'll be mostly like cutting up the video so it's like in different parts and um, kind of like how sometimes I'll do like an example of me, like me making a sound and then I'll play it out. I will eventually be able to do some like really cool face cam editing. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but it's gonna be cool. Um, but after that, I will be doing uh, like a very basic rough cut and then I'll, you know, work through it. I'll cut everything out that I want, put in everything I do want, and then that'll be that. So one thing that I do most of the time is slip clips together. So now they're like either in a J cut format or they do in an L cut format where basically the audio comes in before the video. And that's very specific editing tips. The, they're very simple, very polished off editing things that you can do to improve your workflow. However, that is not what we're here to talk about. I'm talking about the comparison between uh, the slipping in Resolve and Premiere. They both are pretty much the same, but there's a snapping function that you can turn off in Resolve right on the interface. And I think you can do it in Premiere, I haven't checked yet, but basically what it does is it snaps to the playhead. And it is a pretty cool, simple little thing that I think a lot of people need to know about. Slipping is basically taking your clip, slipping them across the timeline, so you have a very specific, a very specific kind of cut. So that's kind of like how it works. You can also split audio, which I will talk about later in the video. I would also advise using ripple cuts, which are basically if you press shift and delete, it'll cut all of the, like if you have your clip selected, it'll delete all of the footage that you want to delete and then it'll move the footage after it over. And that's like the whole project practically in Resolve. So uh, what I would say is I think Resolve and Premiere are very similar in that function, but Premiere doesn't do it as seamlessly as Resolve does. Resolve does a little whoosh to visually explain what's happening on your timeline. In Premiere, it's just a, it just kind of like goes and it's not really a seamless cut. Uh, well, it is a seamless cut if you know how to make it. And then also the whole thing with Premiere is that it doesn't visualize as much as you think it does. It only visualizes as much as you want it to, which is usually not as much as you want. Now let's talk about macros. Macros, they're pretty interesting. I think macros are very powerful both in, in both programs if you know how to use your program you know how to 
make a seamless cut from A to B really simply, uh, then you can pretty much do whatever you want. And if you know your macros, it makes your life 100% easier. Now, if you have a stream deck, I think it works in both programs. Next thing I would say is Premiere doesn't have any like custom presets. It doesn't have, well, at least from what I remember playing around with it, pre-made presets in Premiere, not that I know of it. You have to make your own and it sucks, I know. But then there's also people that are like, hey, you can make your own presets, but you can also have people make presets for you. What I think about that is if you're making your own presets and you're doing all of your own presets, it's very easy to make it your own way. And it's obviously easier to do it your own way if you know what you're doing. So I'd say Resolve is winning in the keyboard shortcuts, the whatever you want to call them. They're winning in the keyboard shortcuts macro system. I think uh, Resolve has some custom hardware you can use. I don't, I don't know the specs of that situation. And the main difference between Resolve and Premiere is that Premiere does not have a dedicated media page. However, it does have a final review page all of your kind of specific clips that you've compiled into a composition. In Resolve, it's a bit different. There is a media page. You can verify what files are not working with your system and verify what files may be missing. And there you go. Themselves, Premiere does have its own dedicated system for organizing panels. You can move these panels around as you see fit. Now these panels are just very, very simply windows. You can spread them out between your monitors. I have three but I don't use any of my extra monitors to set up uh, extra pages in Premiere. However, I do use a second monitor to view my video as in real time to edit. Just so I can get a full frame look at it, I do have two 1080p monitors, so it's kind of useful to have that. Uh, if you're like, hey, I don't know what to do and I only have two monitors and one of them is a weird space. I would just suggest using that other space to view your video. Color and Resolve is a bit more complex. However, it does come with its own page. And I think I use, I've use i used Resolve's color editing to make some pretty spicy b-rule. And I think it is a really good way to edit your videos. If you're not already familiar with color, I will highly recommend checking out Noah Camp's known as Neat on the Rocks video on it. He does a pretty good video rundown of everything you need to know about color grading and color editing in your Resolve instances. Now in Premiere, I don't think there's any kind of way to explain this besides saying it's very simple. There are basic grades that you can use. You can make it logarithmic and then grade from there. However, there, I think there's a dedicated color page, but I don't know. I've never used it and it is by far the most difficult thing to learn. It is very, 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 very advanced. And I would recommend only using it if you know what you're doing with it. Up next, we got an AB comparison video. So I'll be comparing what I did in Premiere over what I did in a uh, instance of Resolve. And then after that final composition comparison, I will be doing an AB test with both, with the same shot. And then we'll be going from there. Hello everybody, my name is Arctic. Welcome to the corner. Today we talk about Vitals, very basic plugin interface. It is basic, but it also is very powerful. It can be complicated at times, but I think you, if you watch this video, you'll learn about it in depth. So today we talk about Vital, a very basic way to build synthesizer by Matt Tattel, and pretty much the very basic front end page of it all. So yeah, if you're new to this channel and want to help out, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell icon in the process so you're notified of whenever I make some spicy new content. My name is Arctic, and welcome to the coin. What's up everybody, my name is Arctic. Welcome to The Corner. Today we talk about Vital's very basic plugin interface. It is basic, but it also is very powerful. It can be complicated at times, but I think you, if you watch this video, you'll learn about it in depth. So today we talk about Vital, a very basic way to build synthesizer by Matt Tattel, and pretty much the very basic front end page of it all. So yeah, if you're new to this channel and want to help out, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell icon in the process, so you're notified of whenever I make some spicy new content. My name is Arctic and welcome to the coin. So this has been me comparing two completely different programs and it is actually pretty cool. I think both programs are very powerful on their own right. And I do think that they're both pretty interesting to use. But after an initial rough cut of just experimenting with the program that I have been given, it's been a really fun ride. And let me just say something real quick before we end off the video and I uh, go into the outro. If you're using a program, any program, 
and you like it, keep using it. If it's more expensive, you don't have to use that program. You can use, you can use Windows, Windows, Windows Video Maker or Microsoft Video Editor. And then you could also use Resolve. Resolve is free, but it also taxes a lot on your program processing power. So your CPU, it's just how it is. There's no way around it. There is still things I have to learn about both programs. Why one is better than the other? Why one is worse than the other? Why there are things that I like about the program that aren't in the other program? I know this for a fact. If you're using a program that nobody likes, but you like it and you love it, go for it. Keep doing what you're doing, but also consider the factors of a professional level software. If you're using Premiere, acknowledge that the people using Resolve are not like, they're not the people that you're used to talking to. Some of the people that use Premiere are seasoned veterans of the video making process. They're seasoned veterans of everything in the video world. However, there are some limitations with Premiere that I think I haven't stood out. I haven't, they don't stick out directly to me, which is the color. The color grading and editing can be a little better. I'm not gonna go into a whole video. I'll go into a whole video on that, but that's its own thing. Why I use both is for their own reasons. I use Premiere to edit this video, part of this video actually, and then I used Resolve to edit the other half. It's just how I work. And, and if you don't like that, you can just leave. Anyway, if you haven't already, subscribe. I make spicy content like this every Sunday at 12.30 12.30 p.m. CST. So if you're like, hey, well, how can I contact you? How can I talk to you? Well, links in the description to join my Discord. The Discord in the description is a very, very, very easy way to contact me. I will be stopping making videos after December this week, which going into Christmas, I am ready to get back. Um, I'm stockpiling a bunch of videos right now. So if you're like, hey, I like this content. Well, let me know. Thanks for watching. My name is Arctic. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and commenting on what videos I should do next. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.